Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Wabash Cannonball. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full four player game today. Now, before I go into that, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and gain access to a bunch of exclusive content, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. Some of those exclusives include my dozens of opinions episodes, where I've talked about hundreds of games, the things I like and don't like about them, as well as my updating opinions on those games as I continue to play them. You can also watch some of my videos early and advertisement free and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make, including those opinions episodes I just mentioned. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching this, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, or maybe if you have a different thought about what should have happened in that moment, or if you caught me cheating, then please comment about those things down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Before we start, I do want to point out that these colored cubes do not come with the game. I added them to make it a little bit easier to tell whose turn it is throughout this video. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is a railroad investor, and over the course of the game, we are going to be auctioning and winning shares in these different railroad companies, and we will spend money in those railroad treasuries in order to place cubes of that railroad out here onto the map. As we place these cubes down, the relative income values of these companies is going to increase, and many times throughout the game, players will be paid a dividend based on their shares and the income level for those companies. Now, in this game, players are going to take turns in clockwise order going around the table until it is over, and on each player's turn, they have to choose one of these tan action cubes and shift it over to the right as long as it is not already at the end. Then they perform the action associated with that row. That could be capitalization, which will start an auction for a new share, development, which is going to increase the effects of cubes already out on the map, or expansion, which will add more cubes onto the map. At the end of any player's turn, where two out of these three are at the end, we will have a dividend where players will be paid money from the bank for their shares, and then these action cubes will reset over to the left, and we will continue to play the game. So, play will continue going around the table until one of the four endgame triggers are met, then we'll keep playing until the next dividend, and the player with the most money on hand in that moment wins the game. There is no value for the shares that we have once the game is over. Now, I will describe in detail how all of these things work while we're playing, and on that note, I think let's now start the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the black player right over here, and we can now begin the game with an initial auction. Now, this happens right at the beginning, and the way it works is one share of the PRR will be auctioned off, then we'll go to the B&O, then the C&O, and finally the NYC over here. The Wabash Railroad train company is over here on the left, and that is auctioned off later on in the game if one company reaches Chicago, which might not actually happen. So we can begin that initial auction, and once again, we go red, blue, yellow, and then green. So we start with red, and we are the starting player for the game. Now we can make our initial bid for this share, and the minimum value for this bid is going to be the initial income level for that company. The PRR starts at seven, so we have to bid at least seven or pass. Now, if we pass, then we are done participating in the auction for this PRR stock, but we can still participate in other auctions in this initial auction round. If somehow everybody passes on a stock, then the player who offered that stock gets it, and that's us as the start player, but I don't think that's actually gonna be happening here. So let's begin the bid, and at the start of the game, everyone got $120 divided by the player count into their personal bank accounts. This is a four-player game, that's why we all start with $30. So we have to make our decision. I think we'll start the bid off at 10. We have $30 total. Purple is next, they say 11. Orge is after that. They pass. Next, yellow says 13. Now it's back over to us. I think let's jump up to 15. Uh, that is half of our starting capital here. And now purple can go. They pass. Now orange has passed already, so it comes to yellow. And they are considering increasing the bid. But instead, they've decided to pass. This means we win it for $15. That means we take that money from our own treasury and we add it into the treasury of the company for the stock that we just bought. 
All right, we have $15 remaining, and now we are going to start the auction for the next company. Remember, we go red, blue, yellow, and then green. So we begin the B&O auction. The initial income for B&O is six, so we have to either pass or start at six or more. And sure, we'll say six. Purple jumps right up to eight, then orange jumps up to 10. Yellow says 11, and it comes back to us. We have $15, so we could increase this bid if we want. Sure, we'll say 12. After that, purple says 14. Now orange can go, and they pass. Yellow also passes, and then it comes to us. Now again, we have $15, so we could bid 15, and we would end up spending all of our money here at the start. I don't think we want to do that just yet. Let's pass. That means purple wins this for $14. All right, the next auction will be for C&O. Their initial income is five, and purple will start. They jump right to 11. Now orange can go. They say 13. Yellow is next, and they bid 15. That worked for us. Uh, now it's over to us. We have to pass. We only have $15, so we cannot increase the bid. Over here, purple does have $16, so they could bid 16, but they're going to pass. This means orange now needs to make a decision. And they will say 16. Now it goes back to yellow, and they're passing. This means everyone has passed, and Orange spent $16 on this. The final initial auction will be for an NYC stock. Orange is going to begin this, and NYC starts the game with the highest income of 8. So Orange starts this, and they're just going to say $14. That is all of their money. After that, yellow goes. And they're just going to end this auction by bidding 16. The reason that ends the auction is because we can't outbid that. Purple also can't, and orange can't. So yellow wins the auction. They take the share. $16 will be placed into the NYC treasury. And now the initial auction is done. This means we can begin the main part of the game. And in this part, we're going to take turns going in clockwise order, starting with the player who won the PRR stock. So we won that, which means we can now take the first turn of the game. So let's focus over here to the action options. Now on a player's turn, they have to choose one of these three options, which is capitalization, development, and expansion. But they can only choose one if that cube associated with it is not already at the end spot. Obviously, none of these are there, so all of these are options for us. And let's start with expansion. Now what this means is we slide the cube over. And then we perform an expansion action with a single railroad company that we have at least one stock in. At the beginning of the game, we only have this PRR stock, which means that's the only company we can choose. So we're now going to expand with the PRR. The way this works is we can add up to three cubes onto the map, and every cube that we add must be adjacent to a hex that already has a cube of this color. PRR starts in Philadelphia right here, so the first cube that we expand is going to have to go into one of these spots right over here. Now, once we place this cube down, we'll have to pay the cost for that cube, and that is printed on the board. In this case, all of the adjacent spots show a one cost at the top, and let's choose this spot here. So that is the first out of a potential three cubes we can place, and the cost is $1. Now specifically, this is the cost for every cube that is there after the cube is added. What this means is if we pretend in the future green wanted to expand into that hex, after they put the cube in, there are two cubes there, and the cost is one. So for green, it would cost one times two or $2, whereas it was just $1 for the first cube that we placed here. So PRR has to spend $1 out of the company's treasury. They have $15 over here, and now they have 14. Now, as I said, we can place up to three cubes with this expansion, and we've only placed one. Let's certainly place another. In fact, we're gonna place all three, I think. Each of these new cubes must go adjacent to a hex that already has a red cube. And there is another restriction to keep in mind, and that is the fact that certain spaces can have one of every company on them. Other spaces can only have one track cube placed on them throughout the whole game. As you can see, there's a bunch of these yellow farmland hexes, and each of these can have up to one per company. There's also a bunch of these forest hexes, and they can only have one cube. So there will never be multiples in the forests or on these blue mine spaces. There are red city locations, and these can have one cube per company. There are also industrial cities that can have one cube per company. And the last type are these starting hexes for the first four companies. And no other company is allowed to place cubes into those. So for the moment, obviously, we don't have those restrictions because this is the first expansion of the game. And I think we'll place this cube here, which will cost $1, and that cube there into Harrisburg. Now, when we look at Harrisburg, 
we can see three numbers along the top. The leftmost number is the price to place here. Obviously, per cube that's there after we place it. We have the first cube, so that's going to cost PRR $2. And these other numbers have to do with income, and I'll explain that in a second. For now, let's finish the payment. As you can see, red owes one plus two or three more dollars. So the PRR has $11 left. And now we check to see if the income for this company has changed. Every cube that's added into farmland has no effect on the income for that company. However, every cube added onto a city does. Now, specifically, we're referring to these two numbers here, the middle of these being the base income for that city. For Harrisburg, that shows a one, so that means the PRR's income is going to increase by one. Now, this city can be developed with the development action, in which case the income will go from one to two because it shifts from the middle to the rightmost spot, and I'll talk about development more later on. It is worth noting that all of these mine spots over here provide plus one income for the company, no matter what the cost is to build into them. And companies also gain income when building into industrial cities like Pittsburgh and Wheeling. And I'll explain how that specifically affects their income later on. So Red's income has increased by one, which brings it from seven up to eight. Well, our action is done, which means our turn is done. And at the end of every player's turn, we check the decision tracks to see if two of them are at the end location. That is not the case. If it was, then we would have a general dividend, and I'll explain how that works once the first of these happens. This means play moves clockwise over to purple, and just like us, they have to choose one action. After considering these options, they've decided to go with capitalization. The way this action works is quite simple. Purple chooses one stock for a company that is currently open, and they start an auction for it. Now, I specify a company that's open because at the beginning of the game, we only have the NYC, PRR, Biendo, and CNO. We do not have the Wabash Railroad opened yet. That gets opened up immediately if a company reaches Chicago. So Purple can choose one of these shares, and they've decided to put an NYC stock up for sale. This auction works exactly the same way as the initial auction, where the purple player can either pass or they bid on it, and the minimum bid for this is going to be the new dividend level for that company once this stock is purchased. Now, I'll discuss how we calculate the dividends later on when we have the first one. For now, I can just tell you that the minimum amount for green is going to be 4. That's not going to be a problem, though, because this is a short auction. Purple bids 15 and everyone has to pass. Purple did this intentionally. They figured this is worth $15 to them. Orange and yellow both have $14, and we have $15, so we obviously can't outbid. So they essentially buy this for $15. That goes into their area. Purple then puts the $15 into the treasury for that company. And we can make a change for this as well. That's finished Purple's turn. This means orange can go, and they've decided to do an expansion action. The only stocks they own right now is one CNO, so that's the company they have to select. And then they've decided to add a cube here, there to Richmond, and there. The cost is going to be one plus two plus one, or four dollars from the CNO treasury, which will bring it down to 12. They also gain income, specifically two from Richmond. Remember, you don't gain any income from farmland spaces. So the CNO goes up to seven, and orange is done with their turn. That means yellow can go. Out of these options, they've decided they're going to expand. They have to choose NYC. And it's worth noting, they're not the only ones with NYC. So they're going to be improving NYC with this action, most likely. And the purple player is going to be happy to see that. They're going to put three cubes down. And the first one will go here into this forest. Now that's going to cost them two. It is more expensive to build that track through there versus the farmland. The second one is going to go into Binghamton, which will also cost two. And the third is also going to go here into the forest. And remember, these forest taxes can only take one cube, so no other company can go through these specific spaces for the rest of the game. Now, NYC does need to pay 2 plus 2 plus 2 or $6 total, which they easily can because a couple of their shares have already been sold. After that, their income will go up just one. Remember, you don't gain income from forest spaces. Even so, that does put green in the highest income spot for now. All right, yellow is done, which means we can go. And I think let's choose capitalization. The reason for that is we have $15, purple has one, and yellow and orange both have 14. That means we can put a stock up for auction and just win it immediately with a bit of 14, and I'm very okay with that. Now, we do have to choose a company to put up for auction. I don't think we should do red because we do dilute when it comes to dividends, 
Again, I'll explain how that works when we get there, but it's just not a great idea to double down when other people don't have stocks in that company already. Also, there is a limited number of stocks for each company. There are only three total for red versus the six stocks for yellow. So we're not going to buy red. I don't think we want to buy green either, so it's going to be between these two. Let's go for the CNO. Sure, we'll put that up for auction, and we're just going to win it with 14 because everyone has to pass. So we'll put $14 into the CNO. And we take this stock, and that finished our turn. So purple now gets to go. And for their action, they're going to go with expansion. They can expand either with NYC or BNO, and they're going to go with BNO. They are going to place three cubes, and the first one has to go adjacent to Baltimore. They think going west makes a lot of sense. Obviously, you do a lot of that in this game. They're going to place this one here, which will cost one. That cube will cost one, and this one will cost two. So that is a total cost of four. That gets paid out of Biendo's treasury, and then Biendo's income will increase by one. So it's up to seven. Okay, purple is done, which means orange can go. And they've decided to go with the last capitalization action that we'll see until we have a dividend. Remember, once this is here, you cannot select it again, so they move it there and perform that action and Orange currently has $14, which Yellow does as well. Orange is simply going to put a PRR stock up for auction, and their starting bid will be 14 which means they win it because everyone has to pass. That does mean they're spending literally all of their money to do this. And that's finished their turn. This means Yellow gets to go. And when we look at the decision track, we can see they cannot choose capitalization because, again, it's already at the end spot. So they have to choose either development or expansion. And if they go with expansion, there will be a general dividend at the end of this turn because as soon as two out of these three cubes are at the end, that is what triggers it. In this case, Yellow isn't even tempted to develop. They are going to go for expansion. I'll explain how development works when we see it. It's pretty common not to see that many development actions in the early game or even over the course of the whole game, depending on how it shakes out. Yellow only has a green stock, so that is the company they will expand with. And they're going to place three cubes. The first is going to go to Harrisburg. Remember, these red city spots can take up to one cube of each company, and the cost to go here is the number of cubes after it's placed times the cost on that hex. So that is two times two or four dollars that NYC will have to pay for this. And then they will spend three dollars to go to this mine, and finally another two dollars to go to Altoona. So the overall cost is four plus three plus two, which is nine dollars, and NYC can easily afford this. There is still $16 in their treasury. And then the income value for NYC is going to go up quite a bit. Now, as I said before, the income value on cities is the middle number if they are not developed. And in that case, that's going to be 1 plus 1. And for the mines, it's always plus 1. This means NYC's income increases by 3. So it goes from 9 up to 12. All right, the expansion action is done. And at the end of the yellow player's turn, we have the first general dividend. Once again, this happens at the end of any turn where two out of these three action cubes are on the end spots. The way the general dividend works is all players are going to be paid a dividend from the bank for their shares. Now let's start with NYC first. The way we calculate the dividend per share is we take the overall income for that company, in this case 12, and we divide it by the number of shares that are held by players. So that is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. You round up if you have to round, and then each share in that company is worth that amount. This means yellow is going to gain $6, and so will purple. Next up, PRR has an income of 8, and there are two of those stocks out. So we divide 8 by 2, and we will get $4, and so will orange. After that, yellow is at the seven income spot, and there are two yellow stocks out. Interestingly enough, we have the exact same holdings as the orange player right now. So that will be seven divided by two. This gets us three and a half, and we round up, which means we each get $4 again. So we are at nine, and the orange player is at eight. So we are technically beating them with the same exact holdings and one more dollar than they have. Finally, the blue company is also at the seven income spot. But there's only one blue stock sold. So that's 7 divided by 1, or $7, which means purple gets $7 for this stock. They are definitely happy about this. Well, all of the shares have been paid, and the next thing that happens during each of these general dividends is the income on Detroit goes up by 1. 
As you can see, there are three industrial city income tracks with Detroit, Wheeling, and Pittsburgh. And these tell you the amount of income that those industrial cities on the map give to companies that place a cube into them. Now again, Detroit always goes up by one after each general dividend, so it goes up to two. This is important because one of the game end triggers is Detroit's income hitting eight. I'll talk about how the game ends in more detail later on though. The final thing that we have to do is reset all of these tokens and play continues on clockwise to the next player. So we get to go. I think let's go with the expansion action. We have a C and O and PRR stock, and I think we're going to expand to PRR. The reason for that is because C and O is kind of by itself right now, whereas PRR is getting boxed in by these other companies. And I think it's probably a good idea to have them get some more cubes down soon. Fortunately, PRR is pretty rich. They have $25 at the moment. So we can easily place all three of these cubes, and I think we should. Now, I do want to point out that we cannot place a cube here or there because the forest and mine spaces can only ever have one company cube. So I think let's place here, then there into Altoona, and then with this third one, let's go there into that mine. Now, we have to spend two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because of course that's two times two in Altoona. As I said, PRR is kind of flush with money right now, so they can easily afford this. And now their income goes up by one plus one or two. So PRR is up to 10. And now it's time for the purple player to go. They've decided they want to do an expansion action with the B and O. So they slide that decision cube over. And then they plan to place three cubes, although B and O only has 10 bucks remaining. Now, they are certainly tempted to place like this over to Clarksburg, but they've decided instead to head up here with these three cubes. The reason for that is because only one cube can go into the forest and mine spaces, and they are trying to wall this off to stop the red company from potentially coming down into Clarksburg. They figure blue should be able to get to Clarksburg relatively easily, and they can get there later on. Also, that gets blue very close to Pittsburgh, as well as close to Wheeling. These are industrial cities, and I'm sure we'll see somebody building into those very soon. Now, this spends all of Blue's money. That's four plus four plus two, which is $10. And they had $10. So Blue is completely broke, and their income goes up by two, one each for the two mine hexes they built into. So BNO goes up to nine, and now it's time for the orange player to go. It looks like they've decided to do the first development action of the game. The way this works is they take a development cube from the supply and they place this down onto either a non-starting city location, a timber location, or a mine. Now this cube can only be placed onto a hex that has at least one railroad cube in it already. If a timber spot is developed, then the company with a cube there gets $2 from the bank directly into their treasury immediately. The next option is the mines. This is going to increase the income of that company by $2 over on the income track. After that, with the cities, if you develop them, then their income goes from the middle number to the right number. So if yellow developed over here, the income of Richmond would go from two to three, and this is retroactive. So by doing that, every company with a cube here in Richmond would have their income from this hex go from two to three, which essentially means their income would be increased by one on the income track. I do want to point out, you are never allowed to develop on the farmland or the starting hex locations. That being said, there is one other type of city that can be developed, and those are industrial cities. Now, there are three of them, with Pittsburgh, Wheeling, and Detroit on the map. Once again, you can only develop into one of these if there is a train company there already, and you are also never allowed to develop Detroit with this develop action. Remember, that happens automatically at the end of each general dividend. So this means Pittsburgh or Wheeling can be developed as long, of course, as there is a railroad cube on them, and when this happens, you do not add a development cube. Instead, you move their income track token one space to the right, and that will affect the income of all train cubes that are already in that industrial city, as well as future cubes that are placed into that city. As you can see, Wheeling goes from three up to six with increments of one, whereas Pittsburgh goes from four to eight with increments of two. So that's how development works, and the orange player has decided they are going to develop Richmond. Once again, that means the income of this city is going to go from the middle number to the right number, so the C and O's income is going to increase by one. That brings it to eight. All right, orange is done, which means yellow can go. And they've decided to choose capitalization as their action. 
They have to choose a stock from one of these companies, and they're going to go with the BNO. Up to this point, there was only one BNO stock, which the purple player had. Now, the yellow player is going to start this off, and the minimum bid for the BNO is going to be the income divided by the number of shares that will be held after this is sold. BNO's income is currently nine. There will be two shares, so when divided and rounded up, that means the minimum bid for this share is five. Now, yellow has $20, and they've decided to open this bid at nine. This means the auction comes to us, but we don't have a decision to make. We must pass. It seems like yellow bid specifically so that we'd be forced to pass because we have $9. So we can't outbid this. That means it goes over to purple and they have $14. Now the orange player has $8. So purple can tell that this is going to be an auction between them and yellow. Now purple is in a bit of a bind here. If they won this blue stock, then they would just be diluting themselves. Obviously, they would be the only ones with the blue stock, so the overall amount of money they'd be getting would not really change in the next dividend with this share. That being said, somebody is going to get this, so that dilution is going to happen regardless, and Purple might decide they want to keep this anyway. In order to do that, they have to bid at least 10, and they're going to go for it. They are going to bid 10, obviously orange has to pass, and yellow passes. This went exactly how they were hoping it would. Now again, that seems bad for the purple player, but they still believe in the BNO company. And once again, once this stock went up for sale, the dilution was going to happen anyway. So purple is going to spend the $10, and that goes into the treasury for blue, which isn't that bad of a thing when it comes to purple wanting the BNO to do better, because there was no money for the BNO to expand, and now there is. Of course, the purple player only has 4 bucks now. That being said, they have three stocks compared to the two and one of their opponents, so they're not complaining too much. All right, yellow is done, which means we get to go. And I'm feeling pretty happy about what just happened because it means PRR did not get blocked in a way that I thought they would be. Let's expand for our action and then put up to three cubes down and let's expand into Pittsburgh, which will cost four. And then let's play defensively and build into this timber spot and that timber spot. The reason we're doing this instead of something like that going into Youngstown and increasing the income more is because only one cube can go onto these timber spots. I am worried that if we do this, then the purple player will likely expand doing something like this into Wheeling, maybe even further, making it much harder for us to get into Wheeling in the future. So let's go here, which makes it a little bit harder for them to make it around to Wheeling. Of course, these mines are pretty good, but they're also pretty expensive, and the B&O currently only has $10. So they'd have to spend all of their money to go 4 plus 3 plus 3 and make it into Wheeling now. All right, we have to pay for this. That is going to be 4 plus 2 plus 2, or $8 out of PRR. They had 16, so now they have 8. After that, the income for PRR is going to increase by just the income amount for Pittsburgh. And that is 4, which is obviously great. <laughs> so red is going to go from 10 all the way up to 14. All right, we are done, which means the purple player can go. And they have decided to go for expansion. There's been a lot of that so far. Now, as I said before, they only have $10, and we kind of got in their way by building right here. Now, part of them wants to go into Pittsburgh, because obviously Pittsburgh has that four income boost, which is huge, but that would cost $8 because it'd be four times two. They'd still have $2 remaining, which means they could do something like that, going into the timber hex and not using this last cube. Now, the reason they're not going to do this is because they are worried that red is going to come through here and potentially cut them off from Clarksburg and potentially Wheeling. If they did this, red could do something like this, which is probably unlikely, but definitely would get in their way. More realistically, red could go here, here, and there, which would make it much more difficult for blue to make it over to Wheeling eventually, and also make it much more expensive to build into Clarksburg. So they've decided they're just going to get into Wheeling right now to stop being blocked by red. They'll go here, here, and here, and as I mentioned before, that costs them 3 plus 3 plus 4, which is exactly the $10 that are in the BNO treasury. So BNO is broke again. It won't be expanding until it gets more money. And remember that happens when somebody buys a stock or when a timber hex with that company's cube on it is developed. When that happens though, only $2 is placed into the treasury of that company. So it helps, but it's not enormous. So BNO has paid and now their income is going to increase by quite a lot. This is definitely a good turn for that company. These two mines will increase the income by one each. So that's two. And then for wheeling, we can see its value is three. So with this build, the blue company's income has increased by five. So yeah, I don't think the purple player is complaining at all.
Well, purple is done, and that means the orange player can go. And they don't love it, but they're going to do an expansion action. Remember, orange has the same portfolio that we do, and they have one less dollar. They're going to be expanding a company, and that's going to help us out equally, so they're not really netting on us, but they are hoping this puts them in a better position compared to both of the other opponents. Now, orange can expand with the CNO or the PRR. And it seems like the CNO is getting ignored a little bit. <laughs> it's the PRR that's going to be building. Now, there is $8 in the treasury for the PRR, and the orange player has decided to spend all of this. They do that by putting two cubes down. The first one is going to go to Youngstown, which costs two, and the second will go into Wheeling, which costs three times two, or six. So that's $8 total, and then the income will increase by one, plus the income of Wheeling. That is three. So the income for PRR is going to increase by four, bringing it all the way up to 18. I am pretty happy that we have a stock in the best company in the game right now. Okay, orange is done, which means yellow can go, and they are going to capitalize just like they did on their last turn. They have to choose a stock to put up for auction, and red is doing very well. They've decided to put the final red stock up for auction. Now they are going to bid nine, and they win it immediately. That's because we have nine, purple has four, and orange has eight. So yellow could see that they could pick up this stock for relatively cheap. Now that is potentially a problem for the PRR because this is the last opportunity for a significant amount of money to be placed into the treasury. Of course, that is $9 because that was the bid. And the only way more money is going to go into this treasury is through development actions on timber hexes on the board. Yellow doesn't mind that too much, though. Red is currently the best company, and it might not be the best company at the end of the game, but it is still definitely going to be worth $9 to them. And this helps them differentiate from the purple player, who is the only one who did not get any of that red stock. Also, yellow still has more money than the rest of the players, so they are well positioned to win the next capitalization that happens. So yellow is feeling pretty happy, and now we get to go, and we are feeling less happy about that. PRR was looking great, but now when a dividend happens, it's going to be split in three as opposed to two. And we are not allowed to do an expansion action because it's at the end already. So we could do capitalization, which would force a dividend immediately after our turn, or we could do a development action. Now we are in Pittsburgh, so we could do that to bump this up to six, which would increase the PRR income by two, but of course, that helps everyone but the purple player, so it's not really helping our position against most of our opponents. I think let's go for capitalization, mostly because we can control what stock will go up for sale, not because we think we can actually win this auction. When we look at everyone's holdings, currently there are two of the B&O stock out, there are two of the NYC, and two of the C&O. So what we should do, I think, is to choose not the C&O, so it's going to be one of these two, to dilute the holdings of our opponents and not ourselves before this dividend. Not diluting C&O is good, especially considering its income is pretty bad right now. It has not been getting that much attention. Now we can also tell that yellow is in a position to buy the stock that we choose, so I don't necessarily want to put something up that they would be very happy about. So let's choose the NYC. Now we currently have $9, and I think we're just going to bid that. I do think the NYC stock is going to be worth at least that before the game is over. Actually, speaking of that, before we continue with this auction, let's now talk about how the game ends so that we can better understand why the players are making these decisions. Now, the game ends immediately after a general dividend when one out of four different conditions are met. The first of these is if three out of the five railroads have laid all of their track cubes. As you can see, red does not have that many track cubes left, but also it might not end up laying all these anyway due to being deprived of funds in the treasury. The second trigger is when three out of the five railroads have no more stocks left to be sold. There are no more red stocks, so that is one out of the three. That means the game could potentially end if both of these B&O and both of these NYC go away. Also, there is the Wabash Railroad, which I have not talked about just yet, and I will discuss that very soon. The next trigger is if there are three or less development cubes in the supply off to the side of the board. And the final trigger is if Detroit has been fully developed. So that essentially means at a maximum, there will be eight dividend payments throughout the game before it ends. Now, when the game is over, the person with the most money wins. There is no final scoring. So that means that the stocks that we have in our portfolios mean nothing when the game is over. They are all about dividends. So once again, we bid $9 with the assumption that we are going to make back at least $9 through the dividend payments that will happen before the game ends. 
Now, obviously, purple has to pass, and orange also has to pass. So they only have $8, but yellow has $11. So they could buy this for 10 they don't love this because obviously they already had an NYC share, but they can also tell that we are about to have a general dividend and they're going to go for it. They are going to bid 10. So that means yellow wins. They put the $10 into the treasury for the NYC, which is kind of rich at this point. Yellow gets that NYC share. And then it's time for our second dividend of the game. Let's go in order from the highest to the lowest on the income track. PRR is at $18. And there are three PRR stocks out. So 18 divided by 3 is 6, which means everyone but purple will gain $6. Next up, B&O is at 14 income. And there's just two of those stocks out. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. Each of these will pay 7 to the purple player. So they get $14. Moving on, the NYC is at 12. And there are three of those stocks out. So 12 divided by 3 means that's $4 per share. So purple will gain $4, and yellow will gain $8. Lastly, CNO is unfortunately at $8 on the income track, and there are two of those out, so that's $4 each. So we're done paying out dividends. We can reset all of these decision cubes, and then Detroit develops once. So we are done and purple can go. And at this point, I'm a little bit worried about us and orange. We do still have a $1 advantage on orange. However, we can see that purple and yellow both have one more share than we do. And purple actually has more money than we do. Yellow is also not that far behind. Purple got off to a great start and it looks like we're not all doing a very good job of slowing that down. Now, before we actually move on to the purple player's turn, I think it's time to talk about the Wabash Railroad. Now, this is the fifth railroad company, and it does not open at the start of the game. The moment any company builds into Chicago, that company will get a special dividend specifically to it. Now, that dividend is a little different than the general ones, because if there is a remainder when dividing the shares, you round it down instead of up. After that special dividend pays out to the company that placed it there, there is an immediate auction for a Wabash Railroad share. Now, this auction works the same as normal, starting with the player whose expansion action moved into Chicago for the first time. After somebody wins this Wabash share, one cube of that company will be placed into Fort Wayne. That is where the Wabash starts. Then the income for Wabash will begin at one or potentially three if another railroad had already built into here and developed that hex. From that point on, Wabash acts just like all of the other railroads, and it's worth noting there are only two shares. It's also worth noting that every time a company builds into Chicago, that company gets the special dividend. Obviously, the first one to build there is going to cost three, the second will cost six, the third will cost nine, etc. But the income for Chicago is also seven, so that is a significant amount. So, let's come back to the game, and as I said, it's the purple player's turn. And they've decided to go for capitalization. So far, purple really cares about the B&O, but the B&O has no money. They've actually decided they're going to put a BNO stock up for auction. That is going to dilute themselves, but they also want BNO to potentially make it all the way to Chicago. And the only way that's going to happen is if shares are purchased. BNO's current income is 14, and when you divide that by 3 and round up, the minimum bid is going to be $5 here. Now, Purple could buy this outright by paying $19, because that is the amount of money that we have. But they're going to start a little bit lower at $10. Orange decides to go to 11, then yellow says 12. Now it comes over to us, and I guess we could say $19. If we did that and Purple really wanted it, they would have to say 20, but I imagine they'd just be happy that we'd put our money into that company that they are doing so well with. That being said, having a stock in what will potentially be the best company in the game is not a bad idea. Purple goes to 14, and then Orange is going to pass. After that, yellow could bid 15, they have exactly $15. And they will. They will. So it's back to us again. And yeah, we'll say 16. I'm worried we might be overpaying for this. I'm not sure. So 16 goes over to purple. And they're going to pass. <laughs> so that means it's ours. We do have to pay almost all of our money into the blue company, which of course is better for the purple player than for us. But that does mean we'll have this stock for every dividend for the rest of the game. All right, that was the purple player's turn done. Now orange can go, and they're going to go with capitalization as well. They've decided to put a NYC stock up for sale, 
And honestly, this is starting to have me a little bit worried about the money we just spent. Remember, one of the endgame conditions is three of the companies having no stock in them. And after this auction, there's only one NYC and one BNO stock left. So this game could be much closer to being over than I realized. Now, the income for NYC is 12. This will be the fourth NYC stock held, though. So the minimum bid is just $3. They've decided to start low at $5. It appears they are also thinking that maybe the game is going to be ending sooner rather than later. Remember, these stocks are worth nothing once the game is over, so you are only bidding money into these shares if you think you can make more money than you bid out of the dividends. Yellow is next, and they've decided they're just going to pass. Now, we have to pass. We only have $3, and the purple player can easily outbid this if they want. Yeah, they're going to say 6 The bid comes back to orange, and they will bid 7 and then obviously yellow has passed, we passed, and purple passes as well. So yeah, I'm starting to think we way overbid on that B&O stock. But either way, orange wins this for just $7. That certainly differentiates their holdings with ours. And now it's the yellow player's turn. They've decided to go for expansion. They can choose PRR or NYC, and they'll go with NYC. They have to expand from where they were already, and they could of course head up here. There's quite a few cities. That being said, they are quite close to Pittsburgh, and they can tell that the BNO is probably wanting to build into Pittsburgh as well, so they've decided to get in there while it's slightly cheaper. In order to do that, they have to go into this timber spot, then they can go to Pittsburgh. They are in for 8 plus 3 or $11 now. That being said, NYC has tons of money. They could put this cube down. And yeah, they'll go here into that timber area. So that is going to be 8 plus 3 plus 2, which is $13. And then NYC's income is going to increase by the income level of Pittsburgh. That is still at 4, so NYC goes from 12 up to 16. Well, yellow is done, which means it's back to us. We have $3 and 3 stocks. We could capitalize, I suppose, just to force that, but I don't think that's a good idea. Instead, I think let's go for expansion, and we'll expand with the C&O. That's a company that's been kind of ignored for a little while. It has $26 in the treasury, so quite a lot. I think let's just head across on the bottom of the board. So Lynchburg is going to cost one, that farmland will cost one, and Roanoke will cost two. So that is just $4 spent out of that treasury. It still has lots of money left. And then income for C&O is going to go up by one plus one or two. It's way down here. Uh, fortunately, it's into the double digits, I suppose. Now that finished our turn, which means purple can go. And they're going to go for expansion as well. The BNO has money again, and they have two BNO stocks. They're going to expand with it. Now they could head up to Pittsburgh, but of course that would be the third cube placed there. So that would cost $12 out of the treasury. It is for income, but they've decided instead they are going to head more to the west. They'll go here, here, and here into Columbus. So that's going to cost just $3 out of that treasury. And then BNO's income only increases by one. But of course, this is getting them much closer to Chicago. So BNO's income goes up to 15, and now the orange player can go. They've decided to play ball with us. They are going to do an expansion action with C and O because they also have a stock in that. They're going to place a cube there, there, and there. So that's going to cost $9 total. Fortunately, CNDO still has tons of money. Then income is going to go up by 1 plus 1 plus 2 for Charleston. So that's 4. All right, CNDO is back in the pack over here. Okay, orange is done, and that means yellow can go. Two of these decision tokens are right near the end of their tracks. They've decided to go for expansion. After thinking through their options, they want to head here for one, then here for the second one, and they are tempted to go to Cleveland. It costs just one, and it increases NYC's income by two. That being said, if they went here on this expansion, obviously the income for NYC would not go up at all, but they'd be three spaces away from Detroit, and Detroit's value is currently at three, and remember, that goes up with each dividend. Yeah, they want to lean into their slight stock advantage with NYC. They'll go to Cleveland. So NYC pays $3 total. They can easily afford this. And then income for NYC will increase by 2. So it's tied with PRR at 18. 
well, yellow is done, which means we can go and we cannot expand <laughs> and we could capitalize, but we only have three dollars. That could help dilute somebody else's holdings, but realistically, I think I want the game to go on a little bit longer, so let's just push development instead and help our own holdings out. Let's develop something that helps C&O out. Now, if we developed Charleston, Roanoke, or Lynchburg, that would increase the income by one for the C&O, but if we developed a mine, that actually increases the income by two, so I think that's what we should do. That bumps Ciendo all the way up to 16. It is no longer feeling ignored. Okay, we are done. That means the purple player can go. And they've decided they're going to go for capitalization. Unfortunately for us and the orange player, they are going to capitalize with a yellow, with a Ciendo stock going up for sale. The income for Ciendo is at 16, divided by 13 after the sale means the minimum bid is $6. Sure, they'll bid 6 so it goes to orange, and by definition, if they outbid this, they are losing money in this upcoming dividend. Because, of course, the dividend that will be paid out to the CNO after this turn will be six. They're going to bid seven. Yellow's decided they're just going to pass. We have to pass. And then purple decides, yeah, they'll bid eight. Uh, obviously, orange is the only one still in. And they are going to pass. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling even worse about all that money we bid earlier for this BNO. But there it is. Purple has won this for $8. That will go into their holdings. And now it's time for the third dividend of the game. It looks like both PRR and NYC are at 18 income. There are three PRR stocks. So that's going to be $6 each. And then there are one, two, three, four of the NYC. 18 divided by 4 rounded up is going to be $5 each. So yellow is going to get $10. Purple will get 5. And orange will also get 5. Next up, yellow is at 16 income. There are 3 of those. 16 divided by 3 rounded up is going to be $6 each. Finally, b and is at 15 income. And there's just three of those. 15 divided by 3 is going to be $5 each. All right, that dividend is over. And of course, Detroit will get automatically developed. Purple's turn is done. That means orange can go. They've decided to go for expansion. And they've decided to build with PRR. And it's probably going to be the last build of the game for PRR, considering there are no more stocks to sell. And they are about to clear out this treasury. They're going to go here, which costs two at that timber spot. Then they will go to this four-cost mine and this two-cost Clarksburg. So that is four plus two plus two, which is eight dollars, which leaves one dollar left in the treasury for PRR, and it's likely to stay that way for the rest of the game. Then the income for PRR goes up by, unfortunately, just two, but that's still better than nothing. All right, orange is done. That means the yellow player can go. And they've decided to develop. They're not going to put a cube down onto the board. Instead, they're going to develop Pittsburgh. That will bring its income from four up to six, which means all companies in Pittsburgh will have their incomes raised by two. So the PRR and NYC will go up twice. And those were both at the top of the track already. The reason Yellow decided to do this is because they have two of that NYC and one PRR stock. They, of course, share this eventually with all players, but that singularly seemed to push them best compared to the purple player, who the yellow player considers to be their biggest rival at this point. So Yellow is done, which means we can go. Now, part of me wants to expand. Unfortunately, PRR is out of money. We could expand for BNO, but that would help out the purple player more than us, and I think purple's winning already. Or we could expand with CNO, and that keeps us on par with the purple player. It does help us get ahead over the yellow player, though. We could, of course, do something else, like develop or capitalize. I think let's just develop. We can put a cube over here onto a mine with the PRR. That is something that the purple player does not have a stock in. That'll increase the income for PRR twice, which brings it to 24. I think that's probably one of the better things we had available to us, so we're going to stick with that. Now the purple player can go, and they are going to do an expansion. And with it, they're going to head up to Fort Wayne that should not actually have this black cube. Sorry about that. So let's see. They'll place B and O here, there, and there into Fort Wayne. So that's a pretty low cost of just $3. And the B and O actually has $10 left in their treasury. 
the income for BNO only goes up by one. But of course, that's not the main reason Purple did this. That reason being they are now three cubes away from Chicago. And remember, there is a special dividend for just the company that places here when that happens. We have a BNO stock, so that's not terrible for us. Of course, the Purple player has two BNO stocks, so it's better for them. Well, Purple is done, and that means the Orange player can go. And it seems like they are feeling similar to us with their current situation compared to Yellow and Purple. They're just going to develop PRR. They're going to put this one onto a mine, just like we did on our turn. They'll put it here, which increases the income of PRR by two. So it goes up to 26, and now it's the yellow player's turn. They've decided to go for capitalization. With a potential special dividend for BNO on the horizon, they're going to put this final stock of BNO up for offer to dilute that potential dividend coming up. BNO's current income is 16, and this is going to be the fourth stock out, so the minimum bid is four, and yellow is going to bid four. And we can see that there's that potential dividend coming up, and of course the game doesn't end until we reach a general dividend where one of the game triggers has been hit. So that means it's very likely that BNO will pay out dividend at least two more times, potentially more than that if we keep slow rolling this, although there is going to be two companies with no stocks after this auction. I think let's go to six. So it's to purple and they say eight. After that, orange can go. All of us have a decent amount of money now to keep bidding these up. They're going to say 10. Now, the reason for this is likely because we're kind of expecting the B&O to make it to Chicago. And when that happens, the income for B&O is going to go up by 7. And that will definitely increase the dividend for those shares. Looking at the current situation, that payout could easily be 8 times 2 or 16. Yellow has decided they're going to increase the bid to 12. And we'll say 13. These bids are definitely getting higher, again, largely because of the potential of connecting Chicago in the near future. You know what? Purple has the money. They're just going to bid 16. That is essentially the break-even point for this share, considering two more dividends. After that, orange passes and yellow passes as well. Now, we could outbid this if we wanted to. We'd have to go to at least 17. And I want four shares. I think let's keep bidding. This might not be the right call. Let's say 17. After that, purple passes... And yeah, we win it for maybe too much money. Let's go ahead and spend it though. And now we actually get to take our turn. Now that was the last of the BNO stock. So we have the same holdings in that company as the purple player who also has four stocks and a lot of money compared to our $3. <laughs> but I think let's do an expansion action to make that bid we just made make money for us. So we'll choose expansion. And then let's build into Pittsburgh. That's going to be quite expensive. Obviously, three times four or $12 out of the BNO treasury. And let's also go down here into Clarksburg. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to have these blue BNO tracks on the same spot as the red PRR tracks. That way, we could potentially develop these spots, this one maybe in particular, because we have the BNO and PRR, whereas purple does not have both of those shares. In fact, none of the players have of that combination of holdings. So we're going to go for that. We are looking at 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. So $16 total for those two cubes. We could put a third cube down, I suppose. And sure, we'll put it there. I doubt it'll end up mattering, but maybe there's a world where we can build it to Youngstown later. Probably not, though. There are only three more blue cubes, and I strongly suspect those are heading to Chicago. Either way, BNO has to spend $17. Again, 12 four, and one. After this, BNO only has $10 left. That should be enough for them, though. Now we have to increase the income of BNO. That is going to be the income value of Pittsburgh plus one over here from Clarksburg. Pittsburgh is at six, so that is a seven income increase for blue. It goes from 16 up to 23. All right, that was our turn. Hopefully that was the right call for us. So now it's the purple player's turn, and yeah, they're going to do it. They're expanding, and they're going to take the final three cubes for B&O and build into Chicago. That's going to cost three plus one plus one, or five dollars. They still have five dollars left in their treasury, but they have no more cubes, so they cannot be expanded anymore this game. Now B&O's income will increase by seven, which brings it all the way up to 30. And then the Chicago special dividend happens. That will be just for the B&O company. And the income for BNO is 30. 
That is divided by four, so seven and a half. And remember, for this Chicago dividend, we round down as opposed to rounding up for all of the general dividends. So that is going to be $7 a share. So we get 14, and so does purple. That's finished the expansion action, but we don't move on to the next player because as soon as we finish a turn where the first track is built into Chicago, the auction for one Wabash Railroad happens. The purple player is the one opening this. And remember, Wabash starts in Fort Wayne with one cube there, which means one expand action could put Wabash into Chicago, giving Wabash a Chicago dividend. That being said, it would cost $10 to actually make that happen. Well, Purple opens the bid, and they are going to pass. You don't actually have to bid. If everybody passes, then Purple will get this stock for free. Play goes to Orange, and they'll bid $3. After that, Yellow passes, and now we can go. We have $17, so we could afford to keep going up, but it looks like this game is probably going to end very soon, perhaps with just one more dividend. I don't think Wabash is actually going to pay out that well. I think we'll just let Orange have it for $3. So we pass, and that, unfortunately for Wabash, I suppose, is only $3 that they have to actually construct track onto the board. That being said, they do start with a free track in Fort Wayne, and there is an income value of 1 there. That means Wabash starts with an income of 1. All right, Orange gets the Wabash stock. They are pretty rainbow with their holdings here, and now it's their turn. Well, they're the only one with Wabash stock. They're going to expand with the Wabash Railroad. They're going to place three cubes down, and they will go one, two, three into Indianapolis. That is going to cost $3, which is good, considering Wabash only has $3. And then Wabash's income will increase by two. So it goes up to three, and the expansion action is now at the end. Now it's time for yellow to go, and they could do a develop action, which would cause a general dividend, and none of the game end triggers have been hit just yet, which means we would keep playing through until another general dividend after this one, because remember, we only check for the end of the game after a general dividend. So Yellow has the choice. They could also capitalize either Wabash or NYC, and in either case, there would be three companies with no stocks. That would be a game end trigger, and the game would end after the next general dividend. Yellow does not think they're going to win if the game ended right now, so they're going to do a development action which is going to cause a general dividend and let the game go on a bit longer. Now, with this develop action, they've decided to increase Altoona. That's because the yellow player only has NYC and PRR stock, so this helps out all of their holdings. That will increase the income for those two companies by one. PRR goes to 27, and NYC goes to 21, and now it's time for a general dividend. We can start with B and O, that's at 30, and when you divide that by 4 and round up, that's $8 a share. So I think, ultimately, our taking this and, I guess, bumping up that income will end up making us money. It might help the purple player out too much, but we have to roll with the decisions we made. So we make 16, and so does purple. Next up, PRR is at 27. And that is divided by three, so nine a share. And that means nine for everybody who is not purple. Now, NYC is at 21. And that's divided by four, so eight dollars a share. This means orange gets eight. Yellow gets 16. We get nothing, and purple gets eight. Next up, C and O is at 16. And there are three of those out, so $6 for every one but yellow. And finally, Wabash is at three, and Orange owns the only stock. So that's three divided by one, or $3 back. They actually spent $3 to buy this stock. So it looks like they're going to make a little bit of money with it. All right, that is it for the general dividend, as Detroit gets auto-developed. And I think it's very likely that the next dividend is going to be the final one. The reason for that is because we are super close to having three companies with no stock. We also have one company without any cubes, although we need two more to have that be the case, and that's probably not happening for the PRR, so I doubt that's going to be our trigger. Either way, it's now our turn, and let's develop Clarksburg. We move the decision token over. We can place this cube down, and that will increase the PRR and BNO from one to two in this hex. So they each go up one. So purple is next, 
and they've decided to capitalize. They're going to put a NYC stock up. So that is officially going to hit one of our triggers and we'll keep playing until the end of this dividend. The minimum bid for NYC is going to be the income of 21 divided by five. So that's $5 a share. It starts over here, obviously with purple and they're going to bid five. After that, orange passes. They can tell there's only going to be one more dividend for NYC. Then yellow decides to pass, and I think we will too. I don't see a situation where paying more for this will actually net us money. Yeah, we're just going to pass and let purple take it for $4. Okay, it's orange's turn. And they've decided to develop over here in Indianapolis to help their Wabash Railroad stock. That's going to increase the income of Wabash by two. So it goes up to five. And now the yellow player gets to go. They are going to develop as well. They have two NYC, but so does the purple player. They have one red, but so do we and the orange player. Yellow still considers purple to be the biggest threat, though. So they are going to just develop for the PRR. There isn't actually that many good spaces for development left for the PRR. Remember, when you develop, you can go onto the timber spaces in order to put $2 into the treasury, which would matter if we thought getting any more of these cubes out for PRR would help. You can also develop the mines, but I think all of PRR's mines have been developed, or you can develop a city or industrial spot. They're going to go with Youngstown. That's not a huge change there. It goes from 1 to 2, but it's still an increase. So it goes to 29, and now it's our turn, and I think we're going to develop as well. That's interesting. Development is the first one to hit the end in what will be the last round of the game. We own two B&O stock and one PRR, so let's develop Wheeling. It will go from 3 to 4, so each of these will go forward once, and that was a quick turn for us. Now it is the purple player's turn, and they cannot develop, obviously. They're just going to capitalize again. They can put out a C&O or Wabash, and they're going to put the Wabash out. They're mostly trying to do this to push to the end of the game. The minimum bid for Wabash is going to be 5 divided by 2 rounded up. That is $3. And they'll bid 3. Orange decides to pass. Yellow passes, and I think we pass as well. I don't think we're going to be making any money off of this one. So purple has yet another share. <laughs> uh, but remember, you don't get paid out for these shares at the end of the game. You just get benefits for those dividends. So that means purple puts three more dollars into Wabash. And now it's the orange player's turn. Well, Wabash is rich. <laughs> They're going to expand. With three dollars in the bank, they are going to put two cubes down. The first will go here, and the second will go there to South Bend. That was the $3, and then the income of Wabash increases by one. That brings it to six. Well, yellow is next, and they are going to trigger the end of the game. They're going to go for capitalization. They have to put a C&O out, because that's the only type of stock left. The minimum bid for this is going to be the income of 16 for C&O, divided by four. So, $4. They bid $4. And then everyone else passes because the game is about to end and this is going to pay out for $4. So any bids above that will just be losing money. So they can pay that money. They'll take this. And now it's time for the final dividend of the game. We can start with B&O that's at 32 income. 32 divided by 4 is exactly 8. If it had been 33, we'd make a little bit more money. But either way, we'll get 16 and so will the purple player. Then PRR is at 30. There are three of them, so that divides evenly to 10. Next up, NYC is at 21, and that's divided by 5, so $5 a share. That means 10, 10, and 5 over here. Next up, there's the C&O that is at 16. Unfortunately, that did get pretty diluted. There are four of those, and 16 divided by 4 is $4 each. Finally, Wabash is at 6, and both of them are out. 6 divided by 2 is $3 each. That's finished the general dividend, and the game is over because, of course, at least one of the game end conditions was hit. In this case, it's having at least three companies with no stock. There's actually four companies with no stock. Now, at this point, we just count up the money, and whoever has the most wins. Yellow ended with 76. Orange ended with 73. 
we end with 78 and purple wins with 105. So it was really close between the three of us, but purple definitely was able to get into a pretty solid position and keep that position going as the game went on. Now, if there was a tie between players, then they would share in the victory and that has completed a full four-player game of Wabash Cannonball. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.